Disneyland opened wide its gates to members of both Purdue's Boilermakers and the University of Southern California's Trojans. of Disneyland, the men were taken on guided tours of the grounds by uniformed hostesses. Much of the day was spent in areas of Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, Frontierland, Adventureland, and Main Street, USA. There they rode the Santa Fe and Disneyland Railroad, the monorail train. They were spun in the cups of the Mad Tea Party, cruised the waterways of Frontierland and the canals of It's a Small World. Bob sledded down the Matterhorn, took a trip on the old riverboat Mark Twain, and glided underwater in a submarine. ended the tour with a dinner at the Plaza Inn. Hollywood's Universal Studio was host to the Boilermakers for a tour that took them to the sound stages, through the property and wardrobe buildings, and then by tram to the so-called back lot. Here they saw the fake streets and false fronts of many of the outdoor sets where their favorite actors perform for the camera. One of the highlights of the tour was the opportunity to meet actor Charlton Heston, who took time out from a shooting schedule to talk with the man. And to introduce Kathy Hayes. Heston invited the group into the studio to watch the filming of a scene from the motion picture Battle Horn, which stars Heston and Miss Hayes. The tour was completed by the studio stuntmen showing the team some of their tricks of the trade. Knott's Berry Farm was a popular spot with the students 
or the rustic settings made ideal picture backgrounds. It wasn't all just fun and games, however, for hour after hour was spent in rugged, hard-hitting practice. Former Purdue All-American Johnny Kerr dropped in to watch one of the practice sessions. Lou Sims, just out of a cast from an injury in the 66 Notre Dame game, showed up to be with the team. Tom Frankhauser, Viking scout, and Lamar Lundy of the Los Angeles Ram, former Boilermakers, were among the visitors. Head trainer Pinky Newell assured the coach that the squad was in peak condition. On Christmas Eve, the Georgian room of the hotel became the setting for a gala party for the team and coaches. Santa Claus, with the help of the coaches, passed out gifts to each of the players. Mullenkopf remarked that the team had given him the best Christmas present of all, a trip to the Rose Bowl, then closed the party by singing jingle bells in a duet with Santa. The following evening, the Tournament of Roses Queen and her court acted as Santa's helpers and distributed gifts that were presented by the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Committee, each of the players and coaches of the Boilermaker team. During the entertainment that followed, Purdue fullback John Charles was drafted from the audience to become the magician's helper. speakers at the Big Ten dinner for Indiana's Lieutenant Governor Rock, Purdue's President Hubney, Director of Athletics Guy Mackey, and Coach Mollenkopf. Over 1,700 Big Ten alumni and guests were entertained by the Purdue Band, the Salty Dogs, and the Purdue Glee Club. found the Purdue delegation having their own party. At times it seemed that all 17,000 fans had converged on the Biltmore, but it did give the students and old grads an opportunity to celebrate and renew old friendships. Oldest alum was Mr. Sam Carruthers of Centralia, Washington. <laughs> 